Molly, I know it wasn't easy to get credentialed to cover the Pope live at the United Nations, but thank you for doing all of that work from the inside there. Now tell us about the scope of the Pope's speech. It was quite a sweeping speech, Lorna. Pope Francis addressed more than 100 heads of state in just under 45 minutes. And he had a lot to say to the international community, but at the heart of every single issue that he touched on was this cry for social justice. Now he said, and I quote, justice is an essential cord in achieving the ideal of universal fraternity. He spoke very clearly to the injustices that are happening around the world right now. And I'll just point out a few that really stuck out. First of all, he talked about economic and social exclusion, the fact that a few are working and living in extreme wealth while others are living in extreme poverty. He talked about this uh, global mismanagement of the global economy and the fact that offensive and oppressive lending systems are holding so many people down. He talked about the two groups, the wealthy and the poor, and how these power issues that exist between the two are actually leaving one completely cast off from society. And he says we need to change this. We need to target these vulnerable populations, people that are victims of sex trafficking, refugees, um, people that are forced into organized crime. And we need to help them be agents of their own destiny. And that will take a fundamental shift in the economic system. He says human development must be built on a strong economic foundation. So really they're hitting at the heart of Wall Street. Secondly, he talked about the abuse and injustices against creation. Um, he was very strong on this. Pope Francis pointed out that we live in a widespread culture of waste, not wasting any words there. And uh, he said we are abusing God's loving creation. And I mean, it fits perfectly into the sustainable development framework. Of course, uh, goals number 13, 14, and 15 all revolve around climate change and preserving the ecosystem. So um, he's speaking the same language as the world leaders here. And thirdly, he had uh, repeated appeals for people to take and pay attention to the refugee crisis, to the, the millions that are forcibly displaced around the planet. Of course, 60 million forcibly displaced right now in 2015. And uh, he's really making a worldwide appeal for people to do something about that. So yes, social justice just at the heart of everything Pope Francis had to say today. Uh, the refugee crisis is not new to the United Nations, but tell us the challenge the Pope presented on it. Yeah, Lorna, I mean, I think the, the challenge the Pope really gave was to protect these innocent people. Like I said, I mean, 60 million people forcibly displaced around the world. A third of that number, about 20 million are refugees, about two-thirds our IDPs are internally displaced people, like the people in Iraq that we met earlier this spring, I mean, people that are running within their own borders. And this is a major humanitarian crisis, and the Pope is just pointing to that and trying to humanize the story. He talked about the sacredness of every human life. And his words today, I mean, they really echoed what he said yesterday in Congress. He talked about the fact that refugees can't be looked at as numbers, but we have to look at them as people. And this is very similar. I mean, you think of the, the photo that rocked the world, right? Three-year-old Alan Kurdi face down on a Turkish beach. That changed everything because people started to look at the situation through human eyes, the fact that it could be your child. And uh, it has changed everything. And I think the Pope is trying to do that same thing, trying to humanize the situation, show that these are people and we can't look at those numbers. Um, and I think the fact that he talked about that we need to protect the innocent is very key to this conversation as well because especially the conversation in North America as people and countries decide to bring in refugees there's been a lot of pushback in terms of where do these refugees come from what are their backgrounds are there a security tr threat and the Pope was very clear today that uh, they are the threatened and they are not the threat. Molly how influential do you think Pope Francis's remarks could be? I think the available platforms, Lorna, speak to the power of this Pope. I mean, you think about him addressing the UN, we're talking about more than 150 heads of state in one room, people from more than 193 countries that are represented here at the UN. Uh, this is a big deal, and it's, it's not just any year, this is a historic year in the United Nations. Uh, 70th birthday for the UN this year, and it is also the ushering in of a sustainable development framework, a framework that's been in the works for the last three years of negotiations. And so the Pope's address really fits right into that framework. There are 17 goals with 169 targets, and uh, they speak to 
wipe out poverty, to tackle climate change, and to really fight inequality. And so there's no coincidence that the, the Pope has uh, an opportunity to speak and address the world, really. People from all different religious backgrounds, from all different faith backgrounds, in one room is very significant. And then you look at the platform as well of Congress. I mean, the last three popes that have visited the U.S. did not speak to the U.S. Congress. And yesterday, Pope Francis got a standing ovation when he left. And so I think the power of these platforms speak to his influence and speak to the way that uh, he's delivering his message and the fact that people respect him and they want to hear what he has to say. A lot of celebrities go through New York City, Molly. How was the Pope's visit different? Yeah, you're right, Lorna. I mean, there's been lots of celebrities here at the UN this last week. David Beckham's been here, Shakira, of course, and uh, Michael Douglas was here as well earlier. Um, but the Pope, I guess he's a celebrity, but maybe just in a different way. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed, uh, you know, when Beckham's around, everyone wants a selfie or they want a selfie with Shakira. And I think that's different with the Pope. I mean, people kind of just want to sit and be saturated in what he has to say. And so it's a different kind of celebrity. I mean, I remember one woman that was pregnant saying she just wanted the Pope to touch her belly and to bless her unborn child. So that's the difference. And I've also, you know, noticed that the celebrities that come as goodwill ambassadors here at the UN, I mean, they're speaking from a moral imperative. And I think the Pope is also speaking from that, but he's also speaking from the basis of spiritual principles. And this is really what guides people of faith, and it is a call to people of faith to, uh, to, to live out what they believe, to care for the needy, to care for the vulnerable, to care for the poor and the sick, that that's not just a nice thing, but it is actually a mandate if you believe in the cross. And um, yeah, so this is the first stop of Pope Francis this morning. He's on to the 9-11 Memorial in East Harlem then uh, to Central Park in a mass at Madison Square Garden. So Manhattan will be Pope crazy today. Um, and as he continues to move on, we are going to continue our papal coverage here in New York. So stay tuned over the next month. Um, in Context TV, we're going to have a special episode from New York for you. Um, signing off from the United Nations, I'm Molly Thomas.